and indeed all of the other admin support of people who are going to support the aircraft's operation, all of that has to be brought into a bare base airfield and that is exactly what we're practicing here at Skullthorpe. And yes, it is uh, very um, typical of what we could be asked to do. You only have to think about things that are going on uh, in Africa and the like at the moment. There, we could be asked to go and carry out rec reconnaissance and other operations from places where there would be very little indigenous support. We have been too flexible for our own good uh, and, and clearly the risk is you, know, you become a jack of all trades. Uh, and indeed with the, with the advent of UN peacekeeping uh, operations over Bosnia, everything now moving up to medium to high level in those theatres but still having to retain the low level capability, uh, the demands that we're making of the, of the young air crew uh, compared to when I joined the Harrier Force, I mean, they're significantly greater. And I continue to be impressed with the way they can get their minds around the problem and do it. So how does the Harrier Force choose its new pilot? Uh, we are looking for somebody that Valley, as the output of the advanced training system, says, here is an individual who is capable of flying a single-seat aeroplane. I, he's got the hands and the feet and the mind to fly the thing properly and work on his own. Beyond that, you're looking with someone with, with bags of capacity, frankly, because when it gets busy, and I think when it gets dark, single-seat, low-level operations at night, uh, you need a bit of spare capacity. Around.